Three years ago we released a video analysing the equestrian urban legend of the Headless Horse, a character inspired by the Headless Horseman. Today we shall attempt to reinvestigate the myth with fresh eyes and an updated understanding. Generally depicted as a male with a black coloration, the character takes on the form of a fully animate horse or pony, with the only distinguishing feature being the lack of any apparent head. Despite this, she is continually depicted emitting horse-like vocalations with some indication that she still exhibits consciousness. In most stories, encounters with the Headless Horse usually end badly for any eyewitnesses involved, the question of exactly what happens to them remaining unanswered. Countering said depiction, Game Loss NLP Mobile Game features the character as an ally within the League of Evil event, though whether this mirrors the canon Headless Horse remains open to debate. Outside of the game, the character is mostly regarded as a legendary being, descriptions within the show tending to derive from either second-hand recollection or dreams. While tales of the entity have occasionally been passed on from pony to pony, the setting and circumstances continually adapted to fit the environment, our oldest chronological reference to such a being comes from IDW's The Fall of Sunset Shimmer a book held within a private Cantalot library forbidden to most members of the public. So, is the Headless Horse purely a work of fiction, or is there something far more serious behind the legend? The inspiration for the Headless Horse dates back hundreds of years to the Middle Ages of the United Kingdom. While there is no shortage of supposedly headless phantoms, the horseman is somehow unique in its infamy. Dating from a time where horses were the fastest form of long distance transport, the image of such a figure would have been particularly unnerving. A ghost that, if it wanted to, could catch you without much effort. The archetype survives into the modern day, predominantly due to stories like Washington Irving's the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and its modern day adaptations, hearkening back to a much more recent incarnation of the legend. However, the original tales were as varied as they were chilling. The character is usually described as either carrying its head under its arm, or searching for one that is missing, sometimes even using a jack-o'-lantern as a temporary replacement. Sometimes the figure rides alone on horseback, while other times they are the driver of a shadowy stagecoach. By far the most chilling incarnation is the Irish Dullahan, a malevolent fairy with a whip made from human vertebrae, who only has to stop and call your name for your life to come to an end. In all stories, the Headless Horseman was once a living person who was beheaded, coming back as either a ghost or an undead being. Comparing the Headless Horseman archetype to its equestrian counterpart, it's not hard to see the similarities. Question is, does the being follow a similar origin, or is the Headless Horse something else entirely? From a timeline perspective, it makes some sense to suggest the story told by Twilight may have originated from the book in Cantalot Palace. Although, unless Twilight told Rainbow Dash off screen, that doesn't explain how she knew of the myth. The legend most likely developed before or in tandem with the written narrative, though there is little evidence either way. In any case, it is not unlikely that the two sources share some details with each other. It's when we try and add the Gameloft incarnation of the character that these two differing descriptions start to contradict. Either the stories told of the Headless Horse are misinterpretations of her true nature, or this incarnation is non-canon, 
Indeed, adjacent to this, there is a far more likely possibility. We have previously discussed the fine line between fiction and reality in NLP numerous times. The thing is, the simple fact that not all works of fiction can be divorced from fact in the NLP universe does not necessarily discount the notion that something is genuinely fictional. Given how little cohesive information we have regarding the headless horse, there is an argument to be made that such a being is simply an old legend. But that's not why you came to this channel, is it? And indeed, if you wanted to argue for the existence of the headless horse, we do have some details to work with. The presence of said being in the Gameloft world does at least indicate her existence within a parallel universe version of Equestria, whether or not it fits the characterization. Even more telling, the fact that her literary transcription is stored alongside works of non-fiction and under such a comparatively serious context might indicate some level of truth behind the legend. While neither of these facts wholeheartedly prove her existence, they do give us something to work with. But if the Headless Horse was ever once real, then how exactly do we explain her presence? Based on what is known about the legend in question, several explanations for the story come to light. While the existence of ghosts as conscious entities remains debatable, the presence of seemingly paranormal phenomena in universe remains undeniable. One of the most notable examples of this is the stone tape phenomenon, in which a visual and auditory recording of past events is played back beat for beat, purely by the environment. The events of shadow play remain our best example of this. It is not unheard of for some reported ghosts who seemingly lack a portion of their physiology, as if the recording itself was somehow incomplete. If such a phenomenon occurred in Equestria, the pony in the visual recording need not have actually lost her head in order for her ghost to seem like it. While the phenomenon would be terrifying to those witnessing it, this headless horse would be harmless. However, this does not explain the Gameloft version of the character, nor her characterization within the urban legends. If we assume the headless horse genuinely shows signs of active consciousness, our only real precedent seems to be Discord's ghost form from a matter of principles, and even then it's not clear whether or not said form is something only Discord can do. As being such as the Dal Han clearly demonstrate, ghosts are far from the only possible explanation. With Equestria exhibiting a wide variety of spiritual entities, a being reminiscent of the Headless Horse could easily have emerged. Indeed, it was actually during the test screening of this video's previous draft that one Darkini von Blessy made an interesting observation. The depiction of a ghostly black mare that can potentially live without a head seems to almost match the description of an Umbron. Admittedly, we have little information regarding such an entity, however, at its simplest, an Umbram is an equine spiritual life form derived primarily from magic that is fueled by negative emotions such as fear. Said beings are primarily reported in the region of the Crystal Empire, with King Sombra representing a much more physical manifestation of their kind. Whilst mostly taking on the appearance of a pony-shaped cloud of dark smoke, they also exhibit the ability to change their outer appearance into that of a seemingly normal equestrian pony. If an Umbrum wanted to derive more fear from its victims, then taking on the form of a headless mare would not be a hard way to go about it. It could alternatively be argued that such an entity may have actually lost their head at some point in the past, However, previous examples of Umbram have seemingly been able to re-manifest lost portions of their physiology, assuming they don't simply phase through such an attack. The only real issue is that, for most of Equestria's history, the Umbram were imprisoned beneath the Crystal Empire. As such, it's debatable as to whether one could have been roaming the wilds of Equestria, with Sombra being the only real example that we know of. An accepted fact of life in Equestria, hybridization of multiple species has been observed throughout the natural world, including among equines. While we can only guess at what might lead to the creation of a composite animal, 
Given what we know, are there any creature combinations that might match the original description? The best example would be a creature whose head is indistinguishable from its neck. Based on that description, two candidates immediately come to mind. Lampreys and leeches. Both of these creatures have a flat, circular mouth, which are primarily used for gripping onto skin and sucking the blood from animals. Could there be a pony leech chimera form roaming the forests of Equestria? While hypothetically possible, it does raise a number of questions. Is such a form individual in nature or its own species? If they are their own species, where exactly would they live? How could they have a big enough breeding population to stay alive, yet still remain undetected? If they feed off blood, where exactly are they getting all that blood from? Again, while remaining undetected. Do they have the same simple eyes as leeches? If that's so, how would they track down their prey and avoid being seen by the population with such poor eyesight? However, if the pony-leech hybrid is individual in nature, then the question now becomes, what happened to make her the way she is? Is she still alive and walking Equestria, or did she pass away years before? Given the being's apparent connection to dark magic, this latter line of questioning does raise a number of rather disturbing possibilities. It could be said being was an accidental creation resulting from experimentation with dark magic. She could even be one of the hybrids created by Grogar himself, a victim of circumstances she could not have foreseen. There is no shortage of seemingly inanimate subjects being granted life. The obvious example would be Timberwolves, with some such creatures even being confirmed as artificially created. However, the Season 9 episode Daring Doubt recently revealed this same process can even be applied to statues. Indeed, it would be arguably easier to enchant a pre-existing form than to create a whole new one with which to utilise. Given the wide range of architecture throughout Equestria, there is no real shortage of statues. And nor would it be impossible to bring even one that is heavily damaged to life. However, even this notion is quickly overshadowed by a possibility that is much, much darker. If one could bring a statue, a collection of books, or even foliage to life, what if someone chose to do that exact same thing to an actual deceased pony. Unlike the other options, we have much less of an in-universe precedent for necromancy. At the very least, similar subjects such as zombies, living mummies, and vampires have been referenced or name-dropped on numerous different occasions. Although it is also worth noting that all these things can appear in popular culture without them necessarily being real in the first place. Carrying on from the topic of dark magic, however, if necromancy was indeed the reason why the Headless Horse came to exist, that alone would explain why written discussion of the being was relegated to a forbidden corner of Cantalot Palace, why the only discussion on the topic would consist of outright demonization, why a mare with no head would be wandering the darkness of Equestria. Tales of fear and unexplained disappearances, following in her wake. Of course, we still don't know for sure whether she actually exists in universe. Outside of dreams, the only confirmed sighting of such a character originates from a piece of media that is not entirely canon. If nothing else, the Headless Horse would make for an interesting grimdark fanfic and still remains an interesting topic to look back on, especially with the advantage of hindsight. Whether she be a tragic creation of dark magic, or a ghostly phenomenon that was misinterpreted, or just another story from times gone by, she still retains a presence around many an equestrian campfire. However, if you ever happen to hear the sound of hooves thundering towards you in the night, or the wail of an unseen mare somewhere in the wilderness. Take care. 
for you never know who or what might be out there. Our next post episode update comes from episode 5, i.e. the Slender Pony. While I initially raised the theory that the Goldy Delicious Slendermane was actually just a mannequin from the aforementioned Pony's collection, further observation has raised some doubt, predominantly from the fact that said being actually seems to move by itself. Even if we assume the mannequin was merely dislodged from its original position at the exact moment the camera panned by, that would be a massive coincidence. Whatever this being is, it is highly unlikely to simply be an inanimate object. That said, we still don't know exactly what it is, or whether it has any connection to the original Slenderman of Internet Mythos. The next episode we would like to revisit is Episode 6, Equestria's Prehistory. Long-time viewers of the channel will be familiar with our prior reluctance towards citing the comics as sources, predominantly due to the question of canonicity, and partially due to the fact that I'm really not that much of a comics reader to be honest. Which is a shame, since RDW's Friendship is Magic issue 24 actually reveals a lot regarding the prehistoric life of Equestria, and with the revealing of the Butter Dragon, confirms the presence of hybridization long before Grogar could have existed. This has far-reaching implications regarding our understanding of how hybrid organisms form, although the data is still mostly incomplete. Either ways, hopefully further information will soon come to light. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video overall, and thank you all for watching. Wow, where was the last time I did a post credit scene? Anyways, happy third birthday of the channel, everyone! Okay, I'll be honest, I didn't actually go in with the intention of celebrating the channel's birthday, I actually just used it as an excuse to make this video. I was obviously inspired by the Bedtime Stories channel remaking their very first episode, but honestly, I've been thinking of going back to my old videos for some time, and honestly, I'm really satisfied with the results of this. Now, I'm probably not going to be doing this to every single video in my lineup. If I did that, that would be exhausting. <laughs> At the very least, hopefully this highlights just how much I've improved over time. Assuming I have improved over time. <laughs> Either ways, I hope you enjoyed this, and there is another video coming up very soon. And this is one I've been really looking forward to releasing. Here's a hint. Mm -hmm.